Hello students, it's Dr. Sansom. I wanted to talk to you today about empirical formulas. So the first thing we need to know is what is an empirical formula? The reason it's called empirical is because it's usually determined by an experiment. Another word for empirical is experimental. And because it's done that way, it will always be the smallest whole number ratio. of elements in a compound. So for example, if I had something like benzene, which has the formula C6H6, that's the molecular formula, the empirical formula is the simplest version, and that would be CH. So when I'm trying to find the empirical formula, I'm usually starting from an experiment that has found the percent composition. So I'm going to begin with percent composition and I'm gonna end with the empirical formula. I have an example here for a compound that contains carbon, hydrogen, and chlorine. And they've told me, I'm gonna make a little table. They've told me the percent composition of each of these elements, 37.21% for carbon, 7.83% for hydrogen, and 54.96% for chlorine. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow this pattern to get from the percent composition to get to the empirical formula. And it is percent to mass, mass to moles, divide by small, and multiply till whole. So first we have our percent. We're gonna turn our percent into a mass, and the way that we're gonna do that is we're going to make an assumption that we have 100 grams. If we have 100 grams, then the percent composition that we have is just the same as the grams. So 37.21 grams of carbon, 7.83 grams of hydrogen, 54.96 grams of chlorine. Now, you don't have to assume that you have 100 grams. That just makes it really easy, so it's a nice thing to do if you want to. So that was our first step, which is percent to mass. The second step we're gonna take is mass to moles. And to get to moles, we have to divide by the molar mass of that atom for each atom type. So for carbon, we're going to divide by 12.01, and we get 3.098 moles of carbon. For hydrogen, we divide by 1.0079, and that gives us 7.767 moles of hydrogen. And for chlorine, we divide by 35.45, and that gives us 1.548 moles of chlorine. So we have our moles. We did percent to mass, mass to moles. Now we have to divide by the smallest number. Of these guys, 1.548 is the smallest number. So I'm gonna divide each of them by 1.548. That gives me my ratio. This one gives me 2.0, this one gives me 5.01, and the last one gives me 1.00. It'll always be one for the smallest. Now, the last step here is to multiply till whole. All of my numbers that are here are whole numbers. 5.01, we're just gonna round to five. So we don't actually have to multiply by anything, but we'll just round so that we get the whole number ratio. So that'll be two, five, and one. And my empirical formula is C2H5Cl1. And we normally don't write the one. So that's my empirical formula practice problem. Now, the only thing that can be tricky about this is sometimes you'll get a ratio here. And instead of getting something that's like a whole number, you might get something like 2.5. If you get 2.5 for your ratio, 
then that last step, you're gonna have to multiply by two to make it into five, but you also have to multiply by two for all of the other ones. So in this case, let's pretend, let's pretend that we had gotten 2.5 for the first ratio, five for the second ratio, and one for the last ratio. I still have to multiply all of them by two. So then I would get 10 and two, if that happened when we did this calculation. So numbers that you wanna watch out for are things that end in 0.5, things that end in 0.33 or 0.67. Here you'd multiply by two or by three. And then occasionally something that's a 0.25 or a 0.75, in which case you can multiply by four. If you get any number that's not a whole number or not very close to one of these ratios, like the 0 0.5, 0 0.33, or 0.25, then you probably made a mistake somewhere, so you should go back and check your math. Um, your numbers should come out very close to whole numbers, like 0.97 to 0 0.03 um, around a whole number, or it should be obvious if they're one of these fraction numbers. So that gives us the empirical formula. The last thing that we might need to do here is find the molecular formula for this compound. And um, we have our empirical formula, C2H5Cl. And in order to find the molecular formula, we need one additional piece of information, and that is the molecular mass of the compound. And they've told me that the molecular mass of the compound is 129 grams per mole. So I'm gonna have to figure out how I get from the empirical formula to the molecular formula. And the way that I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna look at C2H5Cl and I'm gonna add up the mass. When I add these up, I get 64.5 grams per mole. So I'm gonna ask myself, well, to go from 64.5 to 129, I have to multiply by two. So to get from the empirical formula to the molecular formula, I have to multiply those subscripts by two as well. So I get C4H10Cl2 for my molecular formula. I think that's everything. I hope that's helpful and I hope you have a great day.